Welcome to the television ministry of Souls Harbor Tabernacle. We are located in the shadow of beautiful Crowder's Mountain, 271 Camp Rotary Road, Gastonia, North Carolina. Now be blessed by the anointed ministry of Pastor James Chambers and Church. Well, praise the Lord. So good to be with you tonight. This is Pastor Chambers, Souls Harbor Tabernacle in Gastonia. We're so glad to come in your home on this uh, second Saturday night of the month. Uh, we just appreciate you being with us, starting another month here for the Lord. We're on the second, uh, third, and fourth, and fifth Saturday night, and so we're just glad to be here tonight. Pray that you get a blessing out of the program tonight. I invite you to be with us at church in the morning. Our worship service starts at 11, Sunday night service at 6 o'clock, and Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. And if you can't be any of the services, we stream all the services live from the church. Uh, and they're on Facebook, just like this program will be on there uh, shortly after we go off tonight. But it's so good to be with you tonight. I want you to be with us when you can. Have a great church in Morrisburg. Brother Chuck Poole and his wife Joyce labor for the Lord there. They'd be so glad to see you in the morning uh, at 11 o'clock tomorrow night at 6 or Thursday night at 7. If you drive over to Dallas, North Carolina, we'll have another great church. Souls Harbor Tabernacle of Dallas, Brother Eric Quinn. His wife Arlene labor for the Lord there. Their service is 11 o'clock in the morning and 6 o'clock tomorrow night and 7 o'clock on Tuesday night. And again, Betty and I would love to see you at the Gastonia Church if you have the opportunity to be with us. It's just so good to be with you tonight. I want to dedicate the program tonight to all three of our churches and all our regular listeners. We've got a lot of folks that call us and write us. We're so glad to hear from you. And we hope you just enjoy the presence of the Lord tonight. Amen. I want to remind you, as always, to call that number on the screen. Brother Donnie will be by the phone. He's singing for us tonight. This program is pre-recorded, so he'll be by the phone to take your request and uh, your prayer request and anything that we can do to help you. We're always glad to do that. We just love to hear from you, and we appreciate you uh, watching the program tonight. Worship with Brother Donnie as he comes to sing our first song tonight. Amen. Amen. Real precious lady I speak with each week to pray with her. I love her. She asked me to dedicate a song to her, and she has specifically asked for the lighthouse. So I hope you get a blessing from this. Just Miss Martha Roberts. <laughs> There's a lighthouse on the hillside that overlooks life's sea. When I'm tossed, it sends out a light that I might see. And the light that shines in darkness now will safely lead me home if it wasn't for the lighthouse my ship would sail no more everybody that lives around Says tear that old lighthouse down. The big ships don't sail this way anymore. No use in it standing round. And then my mind goes back to that stormy night. When just in time, I saw the light, yes, the light from that old lighthouse that stands there on the hill. And I thank God for the lighthouse. For Jesus is the lighthouse from the rocks of sin. He 
has shone a light around me that I might clearly see if it wasn't for the lighthouse where would this ship be and I thank God for the lighthouse I owe my life to Him for Jesus is the lighthouse from the rocks of sin He has shown the light around Praying with you. Praise the Lord. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, amen. Praise the Lord. I thank God for the lighthouse. I'm sure you do tonight. And uh, you're so glad that you found Jesus. He found you. You was the one that was lost. And we just appreciate the presence of the Lord. We appreciate you being with us tonight. Pray that you got a blessing out of that song. You'll be back in a moment to sing another song. Uh, I want you to call that number on the screen. Talk to him. And uh, let him know your prayer request. He will pray over them himself. And he sends them all to me right after the program goes off. Betty and I pray over them again. And we'll keep praying over them put them in a prayer box at our altar. And we leave them there. It takes about a year to fill that altar box up. And so we leave them in there for a long time. Just keep praying over all of them that's in there. And we pray that you'll be blessed uh, by the program tonight. Amen. And we, we just appreciate you so much. Amen. We'd like to ask you to, to write us this week. It's important that you write us. Uh, let, let us hear from you. Know that you're listening to us. Where you're listening from. It's all important to us. And we appreciate it so much. And uh, we pray that God will help you to take time to write that address down and write us sometime this week. If you can give a love gift, we sure would appreciate it. We've had uh, some extra ones give to us. Had some that used to give us kind of went away from us but you know god knows what we need and if you're listening you can help us tonight we sure appreciate it thankful for those that stood with us a lot of years and uh, we're just so glad to be able to be on this is our 19th year we'll finish 19 years sometime this year start on our 20th year we're just so glad to be here tonight we're just privileged to know that god will use us in this hour amen and if you can help us, God bless you. If you can't help us, pray for us. Amen. Everybody that knows God can pray for us. And it's him that keeps us going anyway, using people like you that help us. But it's him that keeps us going. And we thank him for his presence, even here tonight. Amen. It's just a wonderful thing to be in the house of God. And uh, we're recording this in the house of God. But I always felt like it was the house of God wherever we did it. If we do it from home, if we do it from the... Uh, studio, you know, we're two or three gathered in his name. We're in the midst. There's three of us here uh, at least all the time that are agreeing for God to bless the program. And I'm sure you're agreeing with us. And we're so glad to be here tonight. I want you to worship with Donnie as he comes back to sing another song for you this time. Be blessed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. I'd like to dedicate this song to another uh, faithful watcher, uh, Ernest Durr faithful to this program and supports this program so I dedicate this to Ernest and his mother Mary One dark night down in Egypt a fearful time had come for one little Hebrew boy who was his father's firstborn son the angel and passing low It was hard to fall asleep But one little lamb was on his mind She lay there counting sheep He wondered 
wondered why that young lamb had to die, why his blood was on the door. Through the wind and the rain, it still remained, but he wanted to be sure. So he called out to his earthly father, with a trembling voice so scared, crying, Father, will you please look and see if the blood is still there? He said, Son, now don't you worry, for the blood is there to stay. The winds may blow, the rain may fall, just wash away the blood will stand the raging storm spin up life with love and care safe, secure you can rest assured that the blood is still there looking over all the damage storm will leave you behind. The flood of endless questions and doubts will fill our minds. The fear that grips our troubled soul brings us back to our knees in prayer. Crying Father, will you please look and see if the blood is still there, he said, Son, now don't you worry, for the blood is there to stay. The winds may blow, the rains may fall, but it won't just wash away. thankful tonight. I'm so thankful that the blood's still there, and I'm sure you are. I've had that song on mine for several days, and I, I, I don't know it all the way through without the words, but I, I keep uh, singing that line that says, Son, don't you worry, the blood's still there. And I believe that today. I believe He's there for you and me, and I don't believe it'll ever lose its power. I believe it's real tonight. It reaches to the highest mountain or to the lowest valley tonight. Whatever you need tonight, God can do that for you. And I just believe that he will tonight. Uh, we want to read a scripture in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5. And it's just a real simple verse and just a real simple message. But uh, I encourage you tonight to keep walking with Jesus. Amen. Old hymn of the church says, keep walking. You got to keep walking. I believe that. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, verse 5, By faith Enoch was translated, that he should not see death, and was not found because God translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Amen. I'm glad and thankful that, that he walked with God and pleased God. And I know that you and I have that choice tonight to do that ourselves. God bless this word, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The rewards of walking with God. It is a rewarding walk. Amen. There's rewards all along the way. There's victory all along the way. And Jesus said to him that overcome, would he grant to sit with him in his throne? That's the final reward that we'll get that will last for eternity. Amen. And we're just so glad of that tonight. I know there's rewards in walking with God. I'm glad that he didn't walk with God. I'm glad that God made a way that you and I could walk with him tonight. The old song says he walks with me and he talks with me. I believe he will and can tonight. I believe God's greatest desire 
is to have fellowship with us, amen, to walk with us and talk with us, amen. We're his children. And Micah 6 and 8 says, and teaches us how we're to do this. It just simply says, He have showed thee, O man, what is good, and what the Lord doth require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with God. Amen. Uh, Genesis 6 and 9 said that Noah walked with God. We talk about that a lot. I preached on it lately, not this subject title, but, but some other thoughts. But it says he walked with God. Uh, he probably learned how to walk with God through his grandfather Enoch, amen, who we're talking about tonight. We're instructed in Deuteronomy when Moses was talking to the children of Israel, you shall walk in all the ways of the Lord, which the Lord your God have commanded you, that you may live, uh, that it may be well with you, and that ye may prolong your days in the land which you shall possess. And in the New Testament, Colossians 2 and 6 says, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. So we're told all through the word of God we're to walk with him, in him. He said, if you abide in me, my words abide in you. You can ask what you will. And I believe all that's for us today, but I believe it's imperative that we keep a good relationship with God, walking and talking with God all along the way. If we admit, if we would admit that we may vary from time to time in our walk with God, meaning that sometimes what this means, you have to take it for the surface of it, for the face value of it. It says that uh, if we admit, I'm saying, if we admit that we vary from time to time from our walk with God, uh, meaning that we sometimes are closer to God than at other times, uh, then we must admit that our walk with God is not consistent. Amen. I mean, if we're closer to God today, I like to think that we can get closer all the way, along the way. The song says, walking with Jesus, talking with Jesus all along the way. That's what we're supposed to do. But I find myself often feeling like I've gained ground, and that at other times I feel like I've lost ground. I don't know if you feel like that or not. I can hear somebody saying, well, that's doubting God. And that's walking by sight and not faith. No, it's not. I'm just accepting the fact that my walk with God is not as consistent as it should be. If yours is, I'm proud for you. But I, I just feel like we can just, uh, you know, if we keep praying and keep talking to God, we can just get closer and closer to God. The songwriter request of God that he plant my feet on higher ground, uh, some higher plane that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Uh, I, I, I'm knowing this, I'm just not happy about that. I'm daily trying to get closer to God. Amen. I hope you are. And, and, and I can tell you that it'd be nice if it was just like this, walking with God. But uh, I believe there's valleys and there's mountains. And I believe he's uh, still God in the valley. He brought you over the mountain. He'll bring you through the valley. Amen. I believe that. Hallelujah. I realize the walk with God will show up in the fruits that we bear. Amen. The closer we get to God, there'll be more evidence of us being close to God. The Bible said the disciples had faith to heal and set free and deliver. And uh, that was fruits uh, that they'd been with God. Uh, the Bible said that when Moses was with God, it showed on his countenance that he'd been with God. I believe it'll show in the fruits that we bear. When I see that Enoch walked with God uh, some 300 years, maybe more, 300 years after one of the children were born, it said he walked with God, lived to be 365 years old, it has already rewarded him for 5,000 years in eternity with God. Amen. The Bible said to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord. So I know for a fact that there's great rewards for those that walk faithfully with God, for God, and in God. Amen. And I believe that Enoch could testify tonight. I've been with him already. Uh, and, you know, they don't check time there like we do here. But knowing when it was in history, that it's some 5,000 years or more ago. Amen. That, that God blessed him. Amen. And I just thank God for uh, the fact that he's a testimony that you can walk with God. Uh, we find out not too much further over his stories in Genesis chapter 5 and Genesis chapter 6. 
You see where God was repenting that he had made man. And I can just tell you tonight that uh, you can walk right in a troubled land. And that's going to be tried. We're going to have to prove that in this day that we live today. Because troublesome times are here. Filling men's hearts with fear. Perilous times that Paul spoke about would come, has come. And we're going to have to decide that we and make up our mind that we can't live in for God. Can't quit living for God just because times are tough. Amen. Amen. Because God's greater than anything in this world. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. He's the one that's trying to hinder our walk. Make us have up and down, have had a relationship with God. That's not God's intent. Amen. Uh, it makes me want to do better when I realize that Ames already got more than 5,000 years reward for walking with God, getting to be with him. Uh, you know, I'll join the throne one of these days and those around the throne to live with him for eternity. You can too. And it with, walk with God means that he was in agreement with God at all times. If you're walking with somebody, you agree with them because Amos said in 3 and 3, can two walk, he asked, can two walk together except they be agreed? If you're walking with God, then you're agreeing with him, amen, and his way, amen. Well, we must walk constantly and faithfully with God. Uh, we have become and live in a generation that watches too much TV, takes too many vacations, misses too much church, and don't get deep enough into God's Word. Somebody hear me. Right. And that won't make you uh, closer and closer to God. That'll take you further and further away from God. Therefore, when we do that, our walk with God suffers. Amen? Because uh, we're not there. This is a most important truth that is often overlooked uh, that will affect our victorious walk with God is how consistent is our walk with God or how consistent our walk with God is. If, we, if we're if faithful, the Bible teaches that. All the prophets and all the New Testament apostles, Paul said, be instant in season, out of season. That means do it all the time. Live for God all the time. I realize you don't feel good every day. I realize there's uh, some days that are bad, but I realize that David said, this is the day that the Lord had made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And there's no record of what kind of day he was having when he said that. There was no kind of record of whether it was a sunshiny day or a rainy day or a cloudy day or a snowy day or a winter day. None of that said. It just says that this is the day. All 365 days of a year that we live in 66, 366 in leap year, they're all days that God made. Amen. And I thank him for it. And I want to just start realizing that more and more that every day, I don't have to wait till the end of the day and mark my losses or my gains. Every day is a gaining day. Every day we live, we have opportunity to get closer to God. If we don't, it's not God's fault. If I don't, yeah, you know, one songwriter said, if I don't make it to heaven, I can't blame nobody but me. It's not the preacher's fault, not the congregation's fault, not my wife's fault. It can't be your husband's fault. It can't be your children or your parents. If you don't make it to heaven, it'll just be our uh, one self standing before God and answering to Him at the end of this life. Amen. In closing, Enoch walked with God. What an awesome testimony that was. What an awesome fact that if somebody could say that about me, I don't care how many churches we have. Or, I mean, I care, but don't misunderstand. I don't, I'm not concerned about the number of churches that we have. Or, or the number of things that we do or the number of things that we accomplished in our life, all those accolades won't mean nothing if I don't walk with God. It won't mean nothing where you are if you don't walk with God. Amen. You can have, you know, they'll stand in the Bible and uh, Jesus talked about, they would say uh, that I, I cast out demons in your name and I prophesied in your name. And I'm telling you, I preach Sunday that it's not how we start the race, but it's how we finish the race. And we have a responsibility to finish well. And that's what I want to do. I hope you do. From here to eternity, our lifelong thing must be that we walk with God. If somebody can't say at the end of your life, uh, and truthfully, that you walk with God, more importantly, that God can't say it at the judgment day, that you walk with God. All the walking you've done has been in vain. Amen. If we don't walk with God, 
talk with God and go live with him someday. I believe that uh, it's tough. I said we're living a tough time. And I believe it's tough to walk with God. Not God doesn't make it tough, but life makes it tough. And the elements that comes against us, uh, the demons and the devil, all that comes against us makes it hard. But I've come tonight to tell you you got help in the Lord. David said in Psalms 46 and 1, God is our refuge and strength, a very help, present help in trouble. And I'm telling you, if you're in trouble tonight, call on Jesus. We used to sing a song a long time ago, why in the world won't this world turn to Jesus? All I can tell you is I don't have the answer to that. Amen. I don't know why I waited. I don't know why you wait. Why do you linger? When, when Jesus is calling softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling somebody today through this television network, through this uh, airwaves that you're hearing this from right now, whether you're watching it on TV or you're seeing it later on the streaming, it doesn't matter. It's the same word. It's the same God. And God will help you walk. And in the midst of trouble, he'll be that help that you need. He'll be your very source tonight. One writer asks, is there a bomb in Gilead? I've come to tell you there is. Amen. There is help. We may not be well. We may not be healed tonight yet. We may not have seen the manifestation. But I'm telling you, we have help. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Amen. And whatever you need tonight, we're going to pray in a moment. But before we do, I want to tell you one more time that you can pray right where you're at. You may not always have the number that you can call and talk to Donna or get your request known to a church that's praying. But I'm telling you, the old song says, I can call Jesus anytime. And all you got to do is just call on him. The Bible teaches us by faith. If you're not right with God, ask him to save you. Ask him to give you new life in Jesus. And he'll do that. And if he's already done that, and you've wandered away from God, come home. Amen. And then tell him that you, you're sorry. You want to come back like the prodigal that returned to the Father's house. You can come back. I'm glad we can come back. I'm glad God gives us that option. One day it'll be taken away from us. One day it'll be too late. And the Bible teaches that every out true falls. That's where it's going to lay. So be right with God as we get ready to close tonight. Please be right with God. Don't miss this opportunity. Had people to pray on Saturday night and say, God, come into my life with me in there in heaven today. I, I believe I could prove that tonight by request. Amen. By testimony. God, touch you tonight. Heal you, save you, deliver you from whatever's against you tonight. Because Jesus said, if he be for us, who could be against us? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. He's for you tonight. God bless you. Thank you for being with us tonight. Pray for us this week. Write to us. Be sure to listen to our TV program. If you're not in church somewhere, you can listen to it at your own time. It's on Facebook. You can find them all. God bless you. We love you. Thank you for being here. Be back next week with us, same time. And we thank God for you. Good night. Have a good night. Have a good week. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us on the telecast. Pastor Chambers, wife Betty, and the entire congregation welcome you to any of our exciting services. Morning worship at 11 a.m., Sunday evening, 6 p.m., and Wednesday at 7. Tune in next time.